Hello all, hope you are doing good. I welcome you all to the 8th lecture in this uh, solid state devices course. Uh, in the previous lectures, we discussed about uh, electronic configuration in semiconductors, its statistics and its dynamics in the sense when there is a uh, uh, concentration gradient, when we have an apogeletic field and so forth. Today, we will deal with what is called as phonons. So phonons are basically lattice vibrations and we have uh, heard at one time or the other about phonons and its contribution in electronic transport, right? We saw that uh, phonons, they scatter electrons. Phonons also have uh, contributions in thermal transport, thermal conductivity. They play a crucial role in a specific heat. and as well as is in other properties such as optical absorption and so forth. So today we will deal uh, at, a, at a preliminary level the relationship between the phonon wave vectors. Phonons, uh, fine, so basically phonons, the name comes in its relationship with photons where it means that uh, the lattice vibrations in solids also are have wave like behavior right it also comes in packets and is quantized right so basically we will uh, we will discuss all these properties of phonons we will derive some basic relationship between the energy and the wave vector and certain relationship in the sense what happens if you have a lattice with a with two atoms a monoatomic lattice and so on and so forth. So the basic underlying uh, phenomena which causes waves in solids is the uh, vibration in solids, right? So basically let us once again treat the most simplest that we always understand is uh, a periodic lattice. For our simplicity, let us take the example of a one dimensional atomic lattice, something like this, right? Separated by some constant spacing A starting from 0, 1, 2, 3 so on and we have an nth atom consider this the n plus 1th atom and this the n minus 1th atom. Right? So we have this huge atomic chain. Now uh, when we dealt with uh, electrons we had what is we assumed what is called as Born von Karman boundary condition right this is to say that uh, you do not have any sort of reflection at the interfaces at the uh, at the surfaces and so forth right so the main assumption is that the atomic lattice chain is so long such that when we consider the atoms at the uh, at the center of this chain it does not face any effects from reflected waves at the edges of the boundaries so the Another simple way to put it is that if you have some wave function psi or whatever thing that describes some property in the atomic chain which starts at 0 is same as what you see at n times a where a is the atomic lattice and n is the number of atoms in this <coughs> in this chain right. So if we if we assume something which is uh, uh, periodic so we assume if you have this i of x is of the order of e power i k x like we <coughs> like something that we have seen in the uh, electronic configuration right so this will give you 1 equal to e power i k uh, n a which implies sorry which implies capital n is 2 pi uh, small n by sorry k is 2 pi n a right and you know this n into a is the total length of the atomic chain so 2 pi by l into n and 2 pi by l is the inverse of the total length of this atomic chain and we know this the smallest k will be uh, inversely proportional to the length of this one right so these are the, the uh, commonalities that we have in the electronic structure with the phonon relationship that we have. So let us get back to this atomic uh, uh, lattice 
atomic chain and assume or consider that this atom which is at the end position have this displacement u of n and the atom in n plus position n plus 1 position as a, as a displacement u of n plus 1 and one in the uh, n minus 1th position as a displacement u n minus so now let us consider just these three atoms and then assume that the each atom has uh, has uh, has effects incorporated only from the neighboring atoms so basically only these two atoms affect the motion of the atom at n right so if we consider this then you can write the uh, the equation of motion for the electron for the atom at n as m being the mass of the atom right u n double dot where this is the force right which is minus k k is the spring which connects these things right so what, what the kind of uh, treatment that we have here is that we have this atomic chain and we assume that the atomic chains are connected by some spring right which has a spring constant k and it has a force which is proportional to spring constant k into the relative displacement between these two atoms so if we consider atom these two you will have u n minus u n plus 1 similarly the force acting on these two is k u n minus u n minus 1 so this will be the total force right so uh, at this stage i would like to draw some parallels right so basically okay let me finish this and then we will draw the parallel right so basically the the entire uh, equation is mu n double dot is minus k 2 u n minus u of uh, n plus 1 minus u of n minus 1 right so this kind of feels the same way in which we have a spring and mass damper system you have a spring with a spring constant k and you have a mass m forced upon by some gravity right and if this mass moves down by some distance x then the uh, force balance in this is m x double dot is minus k x right k is the spring constant and this is the hook's law which says that the force acting on the spring is is proportional to the displacement x and the force is m x double dash right if you see you can easily see the parallels between these two equations so this is the classical harmonic oscillator and this is the uh, an atomic chain right so with this we can you can already assume that the solution is going to be periodic right from the uh, relevant from the correlation that we draw with the classical uh, spring mass damper right so basically you can write the solution as let us say u n is some constant a e power i k x let's not write k because you can confuse this k with uh, an electronic wave vector so we are going to write this as q where q is the phononic wave vector having the same relationship it is just the spatial frequency right so we are saying that the atomic displacement q ones have a spatial frequency q in the sense that as you move uh, from one atom to the other you will have the displacement which is periodic in space if this atom has a particular displacement u n you can also assume that the same kind of displacement will happen once you translate to a particular distance in the same x direction right so if i if if, if i replace this and into that we will have m a double dot right into u n is equal to minus k 2 u n minus u of n plus 1 is a e power i q x plus a right minus a e power i q x minus a this is from the periodicity that we have previously assumed right so which will be minus k 2 minus e power i a q 
क्यू माइनस ए पावर माइनस आई ए क्यू यू एन राइट विच वी कैन राइट एस माइनस के टू माइनस टू कॉस क्यू ए यू एन एम गोइंग टू स्टिल कीप दिस एस एम यू एन डबल डॉट राइट सो यू एन डबल डॉट विल बी माइनस के बाई एम इंटू टू वन माइनस कॉस क्यू ए यू एन एंड दिस इज वेरी सिमिलर टू यू एन डबल डॉट इज इक्वल टू माइनस ओमेगा एन स्क्वायर यू एन वेर ओमेगा एन इज right this is just uh, i'm just writing omega n as this right you can see that this is very similar to what the classical case that i have written where x double dot is minus omega square x where omega is equal to minus root k by m right so basically <clears throat> so basically we have found a kind of a solution for a periodic lattice in 1d space whose frequency omega n has this particular relationship let me write this one properly omega n will turn out to be root k by m 2 root k by m sin q a by 2 the root of 1 minus cos q a i can write the same way as this so basically a 1d lattice whose displacement are periodic in space have a frequency relationship with the wave vector q such as this which is in which is very similar to what you will see in the classical case where it is root k by m so here we have slightly different because we have a 1d lattice right so here the velocity v is called a uh, phase velocity velocity is actually omega by q right which is v and the group velocity which is defined as uh do omega by do q right which is something that i would want you to calculate which will be your part of your homework right so this will be the group velocity of a 1d lattice and you have the phase velocity which is omega by q which is the velocity v right you can see that if if q is much smaller than 2 pi by a right then you have this uh, q a much smaller than 2 pi right and you can write sin q a is is equal to the q a by 2 therefore your omega n will turn out to be root k by m into q a right so your frequency is actually linear with the wave vector at very small uh, wave vectors so if i draw the dispersion relationship the dispersion relationship is a relationship between the uh, frequency omega and the wave vector q you can see that at small velocities it's actually linear and at larger velocities <coughs> sorry at larger q vectors you will see that it will saturate and this value is clear is close to 2 pi by a right now this is a kind of a behavior which you have previously seen right the same kind of a behavior when your wave vector q comes close to the brillouin zone edges you can see that you will have some sort of a interference effects from the waves which are coming from the next lattice right at very small wave vectors the interference value effects are much smaller because the wavelengths are much longer and you have a linear dispersion for a phonon now let us discuss another scenario where you have an atom with a motif right so previously we saw that silicon has uh, an fcc structure with an atom with a motif right so instead of 1d lattice that we have previously seen let us consider that we have an atomic lattice like this right and in addition to this you have a second atom which is paired or kind of a twin right if you have something like this you have a kind of a bond here 
and another spring right a first bond and another spring a bond and another spring and so on and so forth right so similar to the previous case you can define that this particular atom which has a mass m1 and the small uh, red atom which has a mass m2 and this one has a displacement un and you have this small one has a displacement b right so if you have this kind of an atomic lattice where you have two different atoms and it's a and each of them having uh, uh, a degree of uh, a, a degree of displacement independent of the other right if you have something like this then you can write the uh, equation of motion as we as we wrote before as m1 let's say i'm writing for this atom the black atom right d square un by dx square right now which is proportional right 2n minus vn n plus 1 right un minus vn minus 1 right so you can see that this particular atom now is related to two atoms of of the different atomic kind right so basically you have k 2 un minus vn plus 1 minus vn minus 1 right now the same thing you can write for this right so m2 d square vn by dx square will be minus k2 vn minus un plus 1 minus un minus 1 right so this will be m1 un double dot is equal to minus 2 k un plus 2 k cos q a vn m2 vn double dot is equal to minus 2k vn plus 2k cos q a u n so now you have two equations which have to be solved simultaneously right in the previous case you have only one equation and then our solution was pretty straightforward however in this case the solution is not so straightforward however uh we will just give you the results here because the actual solution will be just a little bit more mathematical and we want at the time to spend here to solve this the frequency omega square is written as 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 plus or minus right because this is uh, a coupled system you will have a solution which has two roots One by m one plus one by m two square minus four sine square q a by m one m two. So this will be the two roots of this coupled equation, and you can already see that these two roots will have very different relationship between the uh, the frequency omega and the wave vector q. Right. So let us consider. i am going to write uh, two roots that is omega positive and omega negative omega negative when we have a negative sign here and omega positive when you have the positive sign here right so i am going to try and draw these two in the case where we are trying to plot omega minus right where there is a negative sign between these two terms you can see that at q a values much smaller than 2 pi you can see this value will be almost zero right sin square q a sin q a is small sin square q a is much smaller so you will have at very small q values this term kind of uh, becoming zero and you can see that the the term in the square root and the one outside are uh, are similar so you will have some frequency omega starting at Uh, uh zero for q is equal to zero and going slowly linear up to a certain value right 
again it will show this kind of saturation behavior that we previously saw this is called omega minus as we have plotted right in the same way the plus one right you can see that its value will start reducing once you start raising your q so this is q and at high values it is let's say 2 pi by a at small enough values you will see that the omega plus will have a maximum right and then it will start reducing because you can see that this is a plus right and uh, any increase in QA will, will increase the negative term and then you will start seeing that it will have a decreasing trend as you as the Q increases right so this is what is called as W plus you will see that this branch of phonons which will have uh, its frequency starting uh, at uh, 0 at Q is equal to 0 and raising slowly is called as an acoustic branch because the frequency values are much smaller than the other branch which starts at the maximum at Q is equal to 0 right this branch is called as an optical branch and this branch is called as an acoustic branch so you have two branches uh, equal uh, coming from two solutions from the coupled equation that we have here coming from the two roots from the coupled equation that we have here when we have a diatomic uh, system so in case we have an atom with a motif some structures like an uh, uh, like zinc blend diamond so silicon germanium gallium arsenide all these guys have an atom with a motif at each lattice site right under these conditions you always have an acoustic branch as well as an optical branch for the phonon dispersion we will see so these these are the uh, these are the simplest calculations that we can do however some real experimental measurements have been done on in phonon dispersion in certain semiconductors that we normally see so let us see the experimental values so now let us look at uh, actual measured phonon uh, dispersion for three different semiconductors gallium or gallium sorry germanium silicon and gallium arsenide right these are against uh, reduced wave numbers q which is again uh, between 2 pi by a right along a particular direction and here you have energy and you have frequency you can see that there are two different branches one is the uh, the optical branch in each of these semiconductors and you have the acoustic branch the acoustic branch have two different lines one of them is the transverse acoustic and another one is longitudinal acoustic the same transverse and longitudinal are seen even in the acoustic in the optical branch right so we have a chain of atoms like this if each one of them uh, oscillate in plane right they are called as transverse and if they oscillate out of plane they are called as uh, uh, sorry if they oscillate out of plane they are called as transverse and if they oscillate in plane they are called as longitudinal right you can also see here in the chain of atoms right if all these atoms oscillate in phase right each one of them going in the same way however the magnitude being different right you will have the acoustic right if you have, if you have phase relationship however if if each of the atom next to each other right if they if they oscillate out of phase right, you have what is called as the optical phonons which will have much higher frequency than all the atoms oscillating in phase right so this is just an aside to this particular discussion right so each semiconductor have the transverse acoustic waves transverse acoustic waves are waves which go up and down in phase all the atoms in this particular linear chain will go up or, or they will go down in phase right however if they are uh, longitudinal each of them will go left and right in phase or you can have them in the optical range when the atoms go uh, in plane in the opposite direction you have what is called as uh, uh, longitudinal optical and the out of plane direction is called as transverse optical right the same thing can be observed for silicon as well as for gallium arsenide another important thing to note here is the energy levels right you see that the energy 
uh, the the highest frequency energy of transverse optical is about 10 milli electron volts right for uh, gallium arsenide right on the uh, longitudinal acoustic is about uh, about 30 milli electron volts and remember that the band gap in uh, in gallium arsenide is about uh, 0 0.600 600 milli electron volts which is much higher than the phonon dispersions right and you will see that these phonons also contribute to certain processes such as optical absorption and so on and so forth hence the energy of the phonon that is present that is the uh, that is present in the material also determines what all processes that the phonon can contribute to, right? smaller energies in uh, in gallium arsenide also leads to smaller energy contributions of phonons in a, in electron scattering and so on which can also be one of the reason why gallium arsenide has much better electronic transfer characteristics than other materials like silicon and germanium right so with this uh, brief discussion on phonon dispersion we will stop here uh, people who really want to know or understand phonon in depth can also see how you can uh, develop the phonon density of states right it's pretty straightforward so here you have d omega by dk right from this relationship you have you can obtain d omega by dk right now we also saw in our initial discussions that each uh, what is the smallest del k that you can have right so you also have uh, uh, de by dk right so you can in principle have the number of phonon density of states which will be uh, dk dk by de right which will finally give you uh, the total number of phonons that you can have per unit volume and that if you multiply with the uh, bosonic uh, statistics you can give it will give you the actual density of phonons at any given temperature and in any given material right well we will stop here right we can we can go into details later on but then uh, let's stop here for now and then discuss optical absorption in the next time we meet thank you